Well, I've been a bit late on some of these replies. Sorry about that. I've kind of been busy. Mariah Kemp from four days ago. I noticed one of my puppy's eyes are slightly open today and they are seven days old. I was wondering, I, I, I was a little bit worried. No, you don't have to be worried at all. So what age do you see puppies open their eyes? Typically, you know, around day 10 is kind of normal, but I frequently see smaller puppies in the litter, eyes open sooner. Uh, I don't know if there's any scientific basis for this, just my experience, kind of anecdotal. And it can be as early as six or seven days, and it can be as late as 10 or 11, 12 days. And uh, don't get worried about it. Um, just fine. I wouldn't try to force an eye open or tape it shut or do anything. The only time that we do anything on eyes is if we see a dog who's, a puppy whose eyes are closed and it's getting a crusty line and you can see that the eye is actually, there's some swelling going on, which is a, uh, an infection. And in those situations, we try to kind of get the corner of the eye opened up and get some of that muck out and then use a, uh, some eye cream. But there's a whole video on that, so I'm not gonna go into that here. Thank you, James, I've been checking temp for twice a week. So I'm thinking she had a temp drop, but it went back up. Like a progesterone did, she's reading, uh, reading of 24, um, you're talking about UK levels, so that's nanograms per nanomole. You divide that by three, so that's an eight over here. Was told to bring in three days later, but checked her the next day, and she spiked to 64.1 over the night, nearly missed. Well, I mean, here's the thing about temperature drops. I mean, most of the time you see them and they're a nice gradual drop and they can bounce around and fluctuate a little bit, but they don't go wild. But sometimes they do. Sometimes you don't see them at all. So this is the why any one of these things by themselves is not a definitive um, measure of when the dog is ready to have a C-section. So, you know, the things we look for first is temperature drop, uh, not eating food, normally puppies in 24 hours, then uh, nesting, typically puppies within you know 12 hours, and then panting, beginning stage of labor. And then finally, a progesterone level of three or less. But I've seen all of those things not show, even the progesterone level. Progesterone levels are by far the most reliable. But I've seen dogs go into labor with progesterone levels of above three, especially when they've got one puppy in there. So you just gotta stay with it. You can't keep on top of it, watch for the signs. And if you're in doubt, then if you're in doubt, get a progesterone test. And if you're still in doubt, wait till you see the beginnings of labor. And just to add to that, you can get in a situation with a single puppy where, you know, puppies can get distressed inside mum and need to come out, although the, you're not seeing all the signs. So it's kind of difficult, but uh, you need a good vet to advise you on what to do. Okay, next one. Oh. <laughs> Great, great stuff with the background taking over you, taking over you, destroy the whole profession of the setting the wardrobe. Well, this is a very organic, raw, raw channel. We don't do any editing. We just stick it up there. So it's all about the content and not really about the background. We could do better on it. We could have a whole production team in there. I'd have makeup on. I'd look beautiful, but uh, it wouldn't, it wouldn't change the content. So uh, bear with us on that. Um, I think one of the things that we need to work on occasionally is the audio, especially in the car. I think that's a bit rough. So that's something that we need to work on. Uh, S. Rochello, James, what's your thoughts on OFA testing? Well, it depends on the kind of dog you've got. I mean, certainly if you've got big dogs like labs and things like that, then OFA I think is, is probably pretty good to do. Um, so in Frenches, for us, you know, if we don't have mums and dads that have, you know, these knock knees, these knees are displaying out where their knees are flying around when they're walking around, and you can see that in our puppies. And for those dogs, we don't worry about OFA. But, you know, my advice to you would be, you know, if you're buying a dog, make sure that it walks properly. When you look behind, from behind, when that dog's walking away from you, you wanna make sure those dogs and those legs are nice and straight, and they're not flying out with the knees sticking out like this. You're probably fine. I don't think you're gonna find very many people in the French world doing OFA testing. What about Michelle Hernandez? What about a brown or dark blacky, blacky gooey, gooey discharge coming out of 30 days of pregnancy? Look, in all these situations, when you've got a pregnant dog and there's a discharge going on, especially as you get closer up towards the actual due date, any kind of discharge is worrisome. A green discharge is very worrisome because that means a placental tear. A uh, um, more of a, uh, a, you know, if it's black and gooey, then you wonder whether or not, you know, she's sloughed a puppy. You know, she's it's a part of a, you know, an immature puppy has been produced. And sometimes, you know, depending on how late that is in the, uh, in the whole cycle, you may be able to see the thing has got some structure to it. And it's obviously, you know, the, the remains of a puppy. It may be not look like a puppy. 
Um, but what are you going to do in those situations? The answer is not much. What we do is, if we've got any concerns about this, first, take the temperature. If the dog's temperature is 102 or high, it's time to go to the vet and see what the heck's going on. And at that point, probably an x-ray and see if you can see what's going on. This, the, the second thing is, um, um, no, I can't remember what the second thing is now. <laughs> what the hell's the second thing? Um, well, the first one was take the temperature. We know that. Um, oh, yeah, put the dog on bed rest. Yeah, stick it in a crate. Don't let it jump around for the next 48 hours. If there's a little tear somewhere, let it heal up. And you're not having surgery with the dog. You don't want to force a C-section at this point because puppies won't survive. But if the dog has got problems, and that would be evident by high temperature and things have gone septic inside the dog, it's time to have C-section done or a spay or whatever. But, you know, that's not the norm. The norm is is this little tear and the whole thing is fine and you have a normal pregnancy. Well, this kind of fits in with this one. Cinderella says, I uh, just want to know if my female jumping up on me to get some love is dangerous for her pup. She's 45 days pregnant. Well, I mean, so 45, you're 15 days out, you're two weeks away from having puppies. That's the time that we, and especially with a dog that's obviously pregnant, that, that, you know, there's a lot of weight hanging down there, that you do want to limit activity. You know I mean, like, you know, if you're, uh, if you're a woman, you wouldn't go ride horses the last, you know, probably month of your last trimester of your pregnancy. I mean, I know some people do, don't get me wrong. And I'm not saying that you shouldn't be active, but at the same time, active to a level that's not... You know, you don't want to be chasing cars, running after balls, jumping off couches and beds. That's not what you want to do because you could get what the person before is asking about, which is a discharge, which is basically a, a puppy that's been tore slightly away from its placenta and now has some uh, a leak going on. Uh, okay, let's move up here a little bit. Sorry. Eunice, uh, didn't like my bottle feeding. She says, uh, rough handling those pups like that could actually cause twisted stomach. Internal damage for future owners to have to deal with the aftermath of injured dogs. Okay. Well, try to be careful with them, please. Okay. So, comment taken. Um, you know, we never had a problem with this. Doing it for a long time. Never had a problem. The problem is, though, that you do, when you've got a puppy that's specifically a puppy that hasn't had a, a bottle ever before, the puppy is not used to that feel of that silicone nipple and it rejects it. And so it's pushing its head around. So the way to, for me to control that is to grab it on the shoulders so that I can then take my fingers and put my fingers around its mouth from the back so I can, I can control the movement of the head and get its mouth open slightly and stick that nipple in there. And typically, once they've got the first taste of milk, they know what's going on, they don't have to do that anymore. But, uh, excuse me, I'm gonna sneeze. But it uh, does take a little bit of firm handling. So I know you're interpreting that as rough handling. Um, obviously, you don't want to rough handle puppies or any dog, but I don't think that's what I'm doing here. So um, I'm, I'm going to uh, poo-poo your comment a little bit. But again, keep it up. You know, got things you don't like me doing. Tell me about it. Um, Christine Dominique Cortez got my first AI on July the 28th and 26th. When is the expected due date for C-section? Well, you didn't give me the levels, the progesterone levels. But I'm assuming, let's say, that the first one was done on a 15, which would be the right date for a vaginal AI. It'd be 61 days from that date. So that brings you from July, August, September. So it's the 30th of September, April, June, and November. So that would bring you to around the 24th of uh, uh, July or September. Can be close. Can be close. But again, that's not the due date. That's not the definite due date. That's the approximate due date. That is the time where you start looking at what's going on probably four days before that date to kind of get an idea about all the signs. Okay. Let's see if we can get one more here. I understand this one. Chris Oates, you don't mix water with goat's milk powder. You don't mix warm water with goat's milk powder. It kills all the goodness out. Surely people know that. Well, let me ask you this question. You've, you've got to go feed a puppy some milk, goat's milk. Do you feed it cold milk, goat's milk? If you do, you're doing it wrong. You, look, don't boil it. Uh, you can certainly boil the, uh, the, the nipple and the bottle in a bit of what I do, actually, if I haven't used the bottle and the bottle's not fresh, is I'll take a bottle, put a bit of water in it, throw it in the microwave, let it get really nice and hot, swirl it around, you get some steam coming out the top of the nipple, 
then empty the whole thing out, put your powdered milk in there with your water, and it's just warm water that you'd, the same temperature that you'd uh, you know, use for a baby, you know, stuff that feels warm to your wrist. Um, not gonna do any harm, it's not gonna do any degradation to, to the milk whatsoever. And, and I would never feed something cold to a puppy, you're just putting more load on a puppy. So your, your comment uh, uh, acknowledged, but not agreed with. All right, there we go. <laughs> Christina Carey. So if I was to build my own portable incubator, I would only need a heating pad, no fan, no, mufid, mu, no humidifier, no oxygen concentrator. So let's talk about these things in order. So the first thing is, is you've got to have some way to control the heat. If you're using a heating pad, the, so the problem with the heating pad is you've got puppies who are now laying on something that's got electricity going through it and it's going to get mucky and dirty. And so, um, the, you know, not crazy about that as a solution for you, but I mean, you could put it into a plastic container or something, and you could put it underneath the floor with a double walled, double two containers, one on top of the other. You could make a heating tab work. work. You've got to have some way of controlling the temperature. You've got to have a thermostat. The problem with heating pads that you buy, commercial ones that you can buy at Walmart for humans, is they don't, uh, they, they have a, a built-in timer where they shut off typically after two, four or six hours. And, and you can't circumvent that. So you can't leave a puppy in there because at some point, if you left the puppy in there for more than the time between it going off, it would just get cold and the puppy would be in trouble. So I'm not crazy about your heat pad thing, but you could do it with a heat pad. Now you ask about, I don't need a humidifier or an oxygen concentrator. You typically don't need a humidifier if you're heating the puppies up from the floor because you're not heating the airspace up and making the airspace dry. So in those situations, you don't need a humidifier. We don't use a humidifier with our incubator because it's a floor heated system. And by the way, ours is a metal, uh, it's, it's, we manufacture a heating plate made out of aluminum that goes physically under the floor. So there's no contact with the puppies whatsoever at all. There's no problems of shock or the thing getting wet. You can clean the whole thing out. Then the last thing you ask about is an oxygen concentrator. That's a rather a different thing. If a puppy's having problems breathing, it needs an oxygen concentrator. If a puppy has pneumonia, it needs an oxygen concentrator. And you're not circumventing that, circumventing that by any incubator, you've got to go get an oxygen concentrator. And I recommend if you could do much of this, that's exactly what you do. Hey, thanks for watching. Bye. Hey, thanks for watching the, the video. Uh, I really appreciate people who subscribe to me. It helps me, encourage me to do more of these videos. But do remember, disclaimer here, I am not a vet. I'm not a licensed medical professional. I'm purely a person who's been breeding dogs for the last couple of decades. Any information that you got from this video, use at your own risk. There's nothing implied here, and certainly this should not be used as a substitute for advice from your veterinarian or your medical professional. I hope you enjoyed the video. Come back for more of them. Bye.